my Team TV family. How are you doing? I'm your host, Pamela Anchang. I am so incredibly happy to be bringing to you a special treat. Nollywood legend Richard Murphy Damijo, popularly known as RMD, is our guest. He's not just an actor, he's a writer, a former journalist, a producer, and now humanitarian. Most of you don't know that, but this guy is so embedded in social issues, social causes. I call him a true Renaissance man. We caught up with him at the fourth annual Brain Bank Summit here in Los Angeles, where he took charge as the chairman of the event. So buckle up for a chat about Africa's brain drain and the topic of hate against black immigrants in the US, because he had a thing or two to say that you really don't want to miss about how we should be approaching this. Hold on tight, folks. It's going to be a thrilling ride. But before I bring him to the show, do me the honors. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet by clicking on the subscribe button here below, clicking the like button so that YouTube will share our content. And don't forget to ring the notification bell, ding, ding, so that YouTube will notify you when this content is released. And of course, Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Paman Chang and like us on Facebook at The Immigrant Magazine. So without further ado, here comes my amazing guest, popularly known as RMD. All right. Well, RMD, it's so wonderful to have you here. I might as well say fantastic to have you in sunny Los Angeles. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. But they did say I brought the the chill. <laughs> You know, you uh, the, the well, the rest of America has been going through some heat wave, but mm -hmm. uh, when I dropped into LA, they said I brought the chill. So the, the weather is a bit better now. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes. You know what is funny? It's like your name, RMD. I mean, like, how did it come about that RMD? You're in it. it it's a journalist, uh, a very famous journalist in Nigeria called Faj. He he also has a initials for it, for his name. His name is Femi Akin Tude Johnson. Uh -huh. And when in, in the early, in, in 1990 to be precise, when I was getting married uh, to my late wife, um, she has initials of M-E-E. -E. Mm -hmm. And so they were saying, they were trying to cast a quick headline about our wedding. And they were saying, me words, Richard Mofed Amijo, me words, uh, Damijo, me words, Mofe, that it was not working. So he said he just had a brain, like, hey, use his initials as well, RMD. So it became me words, RMD, and a legend was born. You know what? You can say that again. That's pretty cool. Because I said to myself, I'm sure people are curious, how did this come about? That's it. Okay. It's as simple as that, but it's since 1990, it has wow. become... It's cool. It has become my name. It's cool. Yeah. It's cool. But I, I don't like RMD, though. You don't like it? Yeah. It, is it's, it's a public. It's my public persona. Oh, so what are we getting now? It's Richard Mofet Amidjo. The, right. the interview is with Richard Mofet Amidjo, right? Absolutely. So, but we're just going to go with RMD. Okay. All right. <laughs> so he's going to step into the step frame in. sometimes. So I'll try as much as possible to make sure that Richard yeah. Mofet Amidjo answers more than RMD. Well, you know what, though? <laughs> Let me tell you. You are, you are, like you said, a legend was born. Actor, writer, former journalist, attorney. Which is your preferred? Actor. Hmm? That's all I am. I'm, You're all I'm an actor. I'm an actor. I'm an actor. And I might add, humanitarian. Well, yes. I mean, we all... Uh, that, that is probably what the problem with the world is. Mm -hmm. We all have lost... Most of us have lost our humanity. And we all need to circle back to that. Yeah. Because once we find humanity, our humanity, our common humanity, then we will be watching out for our commonwealth more. We'll be kinder, we'll be softer. There will be no hate. There will be no racism. Mm -hmm. It will be one race, human race. You said it. And I, I, I really said that because I know something of that nature brought you to Los Angeles. Tell us why you're here. African Brain Bank. Well, it's... Um, I, I like to call it the the real renaissance, the, the, like the, the, the rediscovery of, our, of, of, of the, our, the African renaissance. 
trying to bring together, you know, to, in a convergence, all the bright minds of Africa, or people of African descent, or to be more precise, according to um, was it Dr. Harris now, who said, black people, we need to be able to come together and address some of the things that we are all going through and, 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 and plow back to the motherland uh, with a view to making sure that we can compete in the Committee of Nations. Um, so what, are we, what am I saying in plain terms? Have people of like minds come together, identify problems back in Africa and this, this year, and, and, and our, our focus is on STEM, STEM education, and see how we can, you know, contribute to making sure that that's, that's uh, the main stay back home and with a view to making sure that uh, we can raise giants. You know, um, every child should have an opportunity to, to be able to live to his or her full potential. And sometimes as little as $10 can make a difference. Sometimes even a dollar can make a difference in the life of a child who just needs to go to school or needs education. And, and that's, that's the basis of why, you know, uh, I came here. I'm really intrigued. And, and let me tell you what, I'm glad you mentioned Dr. Harris. He said, what did he say? Let's all be what? I'm quizzing you now. Again. <laughs> Let's all be what, watchful or... He's like, an unapologetic. Oh, no, oh, unapologetically black. Yes. yes. Oh, oh, yes. yes. That's not what, which I was paraphrasing. Yeah. I was yeah, paraphrasing yeah. when he said people, you know, black people. Exactly. It, it, it just makes it, um, you know, easier. And, and, you know, and that ties in really, like you said, to the Africa's, to the brain bank, which, for which this event you were the chairperson. Why did you take this role? And uh, what is your, do, what are your duties? It was imposed on me. It was important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm usually very held back, but um, uh, the convener, uh, Reverend Palm, um, sees some things in me. I don't know what, I don't know why, but you know, so that's why. And when Reverend Palm asks you to do something, you, you do it. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> but, but it was an honor. It was yeah. an honor to be able to be event chair. Yeah, it certainly was an honor. And let me tell you what, you carried your duty so wonderfully. But it brought me, it got me thinking because some of us were in the creative industries. And I was trying to see, because most people, when you think of STEM, which the theme for this was STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And so for someone watching that's in creative arts, they'll be wondering like, how do I fit in this? So maybe you can tell us how you and I fit in the STEM world. That's the like, the STEM is the bedrock. We all, it's like the, is the backdrop for all our existence. Um, for me to be a creative, you know, uh, okay, so I find a very nice connection or nexus. Um, <laughs> that, you, know, you know how they say the world is a stage and we all are just actors. We all come in there, play our parts and leave. Is that Shakespeare who said that? I think it's Shakespeare. Okay. So, um, for 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 all of us to actually be able to thrive on that stage, we need all the comfort and we need all the, the, the things of life that we need, and and it is bettered by STEM. You know, you need engineering. You need science is a is a key factor. It is when all of that is being put together that we all thrive. You know, and so um, I, I didn't used to find the nexus before, but just hearing Professor Bakayogo speak, and it hit me that, you know, um, even at 62, there are things I can start to make adjustments in my head with. Because it's not about, there's nobody that is born with, with inability to understand math. Or engineering or anything it's about, speak for yourself no you 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 I, I oh I tell you a story I used to I used to walk out once the math teacher walk, in. walk in. and I was my case was so bad that in my secondary school I would my report sheet was was a classical case you would see 70 something 80 something 90 something 80 something <laughs> in every other subject when it comes to math eight <laughs> For your pen and paper. <laughs> Usually for the objective right. that you mark, uh -huh. you know. Uh, so it, it's, uh, 
it's a thing that I could have been better because I, when he spoke, I knew it had to do with my teachers. You know, I didn't love my math teacher and he was not a very pleasant person. And it was as if they're all cut out of the same fabric from primary to, <laughs> they lost me once we started doing yeah. long division. Yeah, once the foundation is now set, you're in trouble. From long division, they yeah, lost me. long division. What about decimals? <laughs> <laughs> they lost me from long division. <laughs> you know? right. That is so funny. So tell me, what in your opinion um, do you think Africa's future, how can the brain bank help to shape Africa's future using STEM for both creatives and non-creatives? It, it, is, it, is, it is already in play. Okay. You know, it is making sure that you do more propagation, you do more advocacy, make sure that you raise enough money to influence these schools, run programs in, in different African countries, uh, do mappings, identify where there is a need, where, where the need is stronger, you attack those areas more. You know, um, people say Africans are not used to raising money, but I beg to disagree now. They are beginning to have a consciousness to raise money. So the more we can do that, come together, sometimes um, we just need to be able to find the people or be able to appeal to the people in the right setting and that will that 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 will be uh, will happen and i think that with rev empowerment and the board you know it's already beginning to happen it's so that's why i say it's already in play okay that's wonderful so let's talk about you the fact that you're here in hollywood right um you've done so well i'm kind of going to switch a little bit because you've done so well and my audience will kill me if i don't ask this question because they sent me some questions now <laughs> so they have expressed interest in you doing something in hollywood you might already have something in the works but just given your flourishing career in hollywood right i'm wondering do you have thoughts of maybe um venturing to hollywood because it has really expanded some well-known actors around the world, kind of like, what's her name, Priyanka Chopra? She was this big Bollywood actress, and now she's in uh, Hollywood doing all these other amazing things. Not that Nollywood is not there, but you have Nollywood, you have Bollywood, you have Hollywood. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, every actor's big dream is to, well, most of us like to make the switch at some point from your own small wood to the bigger. Of the woods, man. Wood. What did I tell you about Cameroon's hood? <laughs> You know, don't 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 scorn uh, humble beginnings, please. No, because no, when that. when Nollywood started, there was no name that they didn't call us. You know In fact, they said they said to us at the time that we were not making films. Mm. Yes, I wonder what they were what making. Were so, so what what usually the the major press, the the, the right. where, what the mainstream press, what they don't understand, they condemn. <laughs> what they don't understand, yeah. they are so frightened of. But yeah. I'm I'm interested in uh, in work here. I'm already doing some work here. Uh, I'm not at liberty to um, to, okay. to divulge uh, okay. right now, no but problem. but um, it's in progress. So rest assured, he is working on something. <laughs> <laughs> now, still in that vein, yes. if you and your projects are coming along, are you ready for the interaction between you and our fellow black actors? And I say this because we want to talk about hate, which we talked about, and people don't understand when they say there is hate because we're doing this project, this initiative called Stop the Hate. And we've identified that hate is not always the way we define it. Sometimes it's just simply, not your face. yes, or intolerance, you know. And in the industry, Africans or black immigrants and the natives, meaning the African-American actors in Hollywood, sometimes there's tip competition, especially, you know, and I don't know if you've experienced that. You speak to that. I, I, I think that it is, it is going to be a gradual process. It's, it's about marking your territory. You can listen. And they look at you walking the tall and all of this. And it's about your territory. <laughs> if, you, if you mark your territory and somebody comes in and, and, and is shaking it, you know, you, you're bound to feel, you know, some, some way. Yeah. So it, it's, um, it, but it's all going to change. Because like I said, when, when people, when we all find common grounds and know that the, it's the, the plate is big enough for everybody, of course. I mean, you cannot compare. I think in, in a sense, again, you cannot compare how it was in the early 50s to 60s, how, how much more integrated our black brothers here 
where with the with with our with, with back home. I mean, Unkruma, Fela, and all these people. There was such beautiful synergy. They all used to come home. Most of them, the Malcolm X, you know, they, they all used to come back to Africa. You know, Amiri Baraka, all these people, they all used to come back home. But somewhere along the line in the eighties, nineties, you know, we lost all that, you know, uh, yeah. uh, 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 you know, uh, cooperation. And then uh, in the in the in the new millennium, you know, all this hate mm -hmm. started to manifest a lot more. But I think that we all need to go back to that the beginning, educate ourselves and, and see how uh, let everybody know that we are all one mm -hmm. and uh, there's no need for, for, for any kind of hate. You know, it's funny because sometimes we blame mainstream media because um, I've spoken to African Americans and they say that the mainstream media made them feel that we did not appreciate them. You know, and then I tell them that, well, maybe it's vice versa, because, you know, when we come here, we are struggling to integrate into the system and sometimes we might miss the boat. Now, when you look at a film like um, Black Panther with its success, you think of the messaging that Hollywood typically gives about Africa. You think that they've maybe changed the tune on how they're telling African stories or do you think that people like you, if you get in the industry, maybe the narrative will change a little bit? So, so for Black Panther, it's, a very, it's, it's very controversial. Um, it's Afro-futuristic, but core black people will with, with, with probably differ. Uh, um, and, and again, talking about um, all of us educating ourselves and, and, and finding our common ground, or finding our common humanity, to, to use that as a basis of relation. How, I mean, so, so I think it was when we were having discussion earlier on during the, during the, the, the summit when I said, so how do you think, how do African Americans think when a Denzel comes to South Africa and plays Stephen Biko or Morgan Freeman plays um, Mandela. Mandela? I don't know of South African actors, mm -hmm. you know, so how do I feel when Black Panther comes out and there are no Nigerian actors in it, and there are no Ghanaian actors in yeah, it. Yeah, and remember, the late Chadwick Boseman is an American, played yeah. the main... Main, main, main character. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, so we have to understand that, look, it's film, there is a culture here, there's commerce, there's the commercial side of it, and all of that. So, gradually, we will all come to, to understanding, you know. Mm -hmm. So, for, I, I, I believe that there's still work to be done. It is being done still in a Marvel universe. And the Marvel universe has an approach to telling its stories. Um, I mean, you can't take anything away from Ryan Kugler, the, the director. Yeah, so... That's but, a good brother, man. Yes. But there is <laughs> people will tell you uh, who are very critical of our Africanness and say, look, um, you can't... The, in the very telling of the story itself, you know, uh, you can't make... Uh, a Latino kick our ass before, <laughs> you know. So there are, I don't want to get into yeah, the whole, no. the whole, you know, uh, uh, argument of it. But on the face of it, the pride, the, the the resurgence of the African pride that the film engenders is good. You know, uh, we can if we go if we dive deeper, you know, into the. The, all the details of it. We, of course, there is work to be done. We will see things that could have been rearranged differently, you know, and so make sure that the hero is the hero and not, not um, again, uh, uh, a Caucasian American coming in to help save the day. You know, we, you know it's, it's, a, it's a type that we, we keep fighting. But again, this is not a forum to, you know to what? review. We will do our review. <laughs> review Wakanda forever. What, listen. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you what, you know what's funny, we're having this conversation about Africa's brain drain and STEM. Typical example, STEM! Yeah. Brain yeah. drain! That's, you know, you know uh, uh, Wakanda is, is STEM. It's STEM. It's STEM. It's, it's the creative. Be yes, it's the beauty of STEM. Because I, at first I never heard STEM, I'm like, oh, not for me. <laughs> you know, but now I realize that, yeah, it is STEM. So, what do you think about Tyler Perry, maybe? you know, and his success and what he's doing, maybe he can start collaborating. I love that man. I, he's, um, for me, he represents, you know, living to your full potential. Yeah. Um, I like when, when 
when geniuses or when people who who are way ahead of their time do stuff and everybody looks at them and says, no, this is not, you know. Yeah. And then a few years down the line, they're like, oh, this is the guy. This is the guy. And that, that's his story, it's very typical. Doesn't that go back to what you just talked about, you know, ignoring Nollywood, saying they ignored so, him, humble and then, humble like you said, don't knock down Hollywood no, now. No, no. Cameroon is Camwood, Hollywood, whichever yeah, they want. They, they, I'm cool, they, hey. <laughs> with what they've done with music, you know, uh, oh my God. it's only a question of time. So, RMD, the truth of the matter is that um, you are iconic and really, um, not just because of your work, per se, your humanity shines. So I really want to ask you a question about this, because you, even though you're based in Nigeria, you have relatives in the United States. And I'm just curious about what your thoughts are about how black people and African immigrants, because we are African immigrants, me, not you though, how we are treated, because right now statistics and the data shows that we, are the, we experience the most hate. So I really want to seize this opportunity for you to really talk about, you know, this phenomenon that's going on with hate. George Floyd, I'm sure you saw, Breonna Taylor, there's so much going on. As a matter of fact, the last incident of hate that I can recall was the Nigerian that was killed by a neighbor in Florida. I don't know if you heard about that story. The children were playing outside, the neighbor confiscated an iPad or something, and um, she went to get it or confronted the woman or something. She showed up at the door and the woman shot her. Turned out she was Nigerian. Ajaik is her name. What are your thoughts about this? Look, um, it's sad. I mean, from Floyd to Brianna to the Nigerian, I was trying, uh, um, I don't even know where to start, but um, hate is thought to people. Nobody's born we hate in his mind or in, in his heart or in her heart. Um, again, we will we'll be, I don't know if this is the forum for it, but we will be going back into the whole concept of, you know, white and black and, and privilege, white privileges and all of that, uh, that long, uh, uh, you know, st uh, history of, of all of that. And I would just say that we as a people, especially black people, we need to gradually begin to deconstruct what the mainstream press writes about us. We must begin to start to own our stories and be a part of that so-called mainstream, you know, so that we, 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 when, when there is a thread that represents us wrongly, there will be two more threads from us that represents us rightly. Uh, you can't keep talking about a mainstream press as if it is something that is impenetrable, okay? So we must become, our voice must get into the mainstream you know, uh, press and begin to rewrite all that narrative that is completely wrong. You know how they will say, oh, uh, 100 inventors in the world and they will leave all black people out of it. And then you will find that even the medium that they are using to talk about the, the 100, you know, was done by a black person. I mean, thank God for social media. There is a gradual but present effort to you know, right some of these wrongs that have been, you know, done for all, for all over the years. I mean, you get in there now, you you see things, which is why what Brain Bank is also about. And, you know, uh, you talk about Egypt, you talk about our ancestry, you talk about present day scientists, engineers doing things, and you know, from robotics to whatever. There was a time we were doing a, a documentary on on Nigerian immigrants here in, in America. And we got to the point where we even found a, that it was a Nigerian that designed the robotic arm at NASA. Wow. We, Talk about brain drain. We found, I will, I will address that. We found a Nigerian that was doing, that was part of the team 
that did the that did the food or whatever it is that sustains astronauts when they are up there. This is just Nigeria. We're looking at Africans. Africa. You understand? So there's there's so there's so, Nigerians in military, in marine, in, in everywhere. So it's the same thing for Africans all over the place. There are Camer I met a Cameroonian who designed. Uh, something for one of the things uh, you used to uh, geolocation on phones. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. GPS. GPS, you know. So yeah. these are things that they are too numerous to mention. Yeah. You know, so we must begin to start saying these things. Yeah. I mean, we, not, we cannot even start to talk about Egypt now and our, our old history and, and the fact that, like Dr. Harry says, the digger you deep, the blacker the entire <laughs> world <laughs> is. <laughs> you know, civilization started... <laughs> Right in Africa, Absolutely. you know, uh, give birth to Greek, to Rome, to whatever, Ottoman Empire, all of that. So we will uh, constantly uh, need to start to rewrite all of that. Yeah. We have to be mainstream media as well. We have to become mainstream. That's right. You know? Yes, and you think and and STEM and the Brain Bank are exactly the perfect. Forum or entity to for for for, for like all this. of that and and I don't know if you heard what I said the other time I said I don't like to see the drift or the the, the movement of of Africans to 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 uh, America or Europe as a brain drain anymore. Right. No, I don't. Okay. Yeah, I don't see it as a brain drain okay. anymore. Because we've been feeling guilty now. Yes, I see it. I see it. I see it as I I, I see I see a time when, you know. The, the Europeans, they, they got to a point in their history where they needed to move out, mm -hmm. right? To go to other continents and, and find other things. And we have gotten to another point. We've gone full circle because we did, this, we did as well. We moved all over the world. So we've come full circle. Now we are going back again out into the continents to discover, to do, to find out different things about civilization. And... After a while, there's going to be a return, a grand return. And when these people are returning, it's like they have all become enlightened. Enlightened, not for at the physical level alone, but enlightenment at, from a spiritual sense, which is to say they, will, they have become very different from how they were when they migrated because they have refined themselves over generations and generations. And when they come back to Africa, I just dropped my mic, you didn't, you didn't. Let go the mic. I was in Belize and the Belizeans say, let go the mic. <laughs> so, so, so that is why you find that, um, and it has actually started. Yes. The younger people that are in charge of all the uh, engineering and, and, and uh, big players in the, in, in, in the tech sector, the big players in the creative sector, they are all in their 20s and 30s. And they are not interested in staying back here anymore. They finish their schooling, they are rushing back home. They are, they are founders of tech companies, tech companies everything. They, I mean, this it's already happening. So imagine, project another 20, 30 yeah. years when our grandchildren are now the ones who have, that's third generation or fourth generation, uh, you know, immigrant children. They will take over politics here. They will take over everything. That is true. Yes. So I'm really glad you talked about the youth going back and all of that. But my question, though, is like, what structures we have in place? Tell me a little bit about what's going on in Nigeria, because Africa seems to be going through a new revolution, as we're calling it. What's going on? Tell me about Nigeria. Oh, uh, <laughs> In Nigeria, there is the rise of a new tribe, a new tribe of young people who will not, not, not keep quiet. You know, so what is happening now is that you see their voices manifested in politics, where they are turning out to vote, they're turning out to join parties and demand change. Matter of fact, uh, I don't know if you heard about the um, the Lekki uprising and the youth protest, the NSAS movement, and all. Oh yeah, I was actually part of that. I interviewed some a few people from Nigeria. Yeah. So, yeah. so those, those those are powered by young people. They are the ones who are founders now of the, some of the biggest tech companies in Africa. 
the entire Africa. There are, there are people all in their 20s and 30s who are running banks, who are running the entire gateway for payments and remittances to Africa and all of that. You find same thing in Ghana. You find same thing in Nairobi, in 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 um, in Rwanda, and all of that. So it, it is it is a revolution. Uh, is the is the uprising of a young tribe of Nigerians, and it is replicated across Africa. Is it what is happening military wise in Gabon and all of these places? Story Niger. story in Niger. Mm -hmm. Story for another for day. For another day. Okay, <laughs> but. It is, that is the birth of the new tribe I'm talking about. That new tribe, this, what you are seeing is the manifestation of maybe the second generation of it. By the time your grandchildren, our grandchildren, start to go back home, the ones there now would have brought it to a certain level. I say to people, you ask me specifically about Nigeria, and I say to people that give Nigeria three more election cycles. Technology will liberate Nigeria. Technology will liberate politics in Nigeria. It will eliminate corruption in election, election malpractices to less than 10%. Because you cannot escape biometrics anymore. Data is king. As people are reaping data, it might look small now. Uh, it starts with when you want to do anything in Nigeria, if you don't have an NIN, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to do anything now in the bank, you say, where's your BVN? You can't do anything without your BVN. Now you want to, our passport is now being scanned. Biometrics is king. Because data is the new oil or is the new gas, is the new power, soft power, every country in the world to join the committee of countries must be able to put everything and say, this is our data. And because of that, when everything gets to that point where it is all biometric based, then elections cannot be rigged in the way it is being done now in Nigeria. So liberation comes for that. Who are leading? Who are the people leading this? The young people. The young people. They will deploy technology into anything. Hmm. Nowadays, everything is an app. Right. When the world shut down, there was a hard reset during COVID, and it taught us that we can't survive. And the people that led that reset were young people. So is there a synergy between the young people and the leadership? Because if you recall, um, Mr. Herschel Daniels talked about leadership, the role of leadership. And Africa has been really suffering a crisis of leadership. Yeah. There is a resistance of these young people, of this new tribe, which is always the, the, the case. I mean, even Obama, when, 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 when he came and swept through, he, there was resistance. But the resistance only fuels you know, <laughs> the, 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 the coming of the new tribe. Um, there is going to be integration. The, the integration, or there's already integration in areas where they don't see a choice but to cooperate, <laughs> you know. Are you sure? And, yeah, and, and, and the good thing about, about technology is that you don't have a choice. It will bypass. <laughs> <It's them. laughs> it will bypass you and your corruption. Right. And, and, bring, and shine a new light, and then you see how extinct or moribund you have become. I mean, this is impressive because this is again tying into STEM and the brain drain. And everything. Everything every, I'm talking to you is, is, is about technology. It is, it call is. it soft power, call it anything, <laughs> it's about technology. So let me ask you because this, you and I can have this conversation till tomorrow. It's so exciting. Um, what do you have in place for the diaspora? that might want to get involved. Again, you've said people are returning, but some, not everybody's going to return. I mean, for the brain bank, how can people in the diaspora be a part of this movement? Um, I think we have a website, um, www.africanbrainbank.org. Uh, um, I mean, all the details are there, but again, it is by participating. Um, there, will be, there will be a lot more uh, networking I think that we all will find ourselves somehow. It's a world wide web now, so um, there will be a lot more advocacy to to involve all our, 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 as much of our brothers and sisters in the movement. Uh, there are tie-in organizations 
all conference of mayors, business, black investors, and all that. So all of that is happening already at, at, at the admin level, you know, where you are tying into all kinds of organizations and, 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 and uh, forming partnerships. So all of that is happening. That's wonderful. We have to continue this conversation. This is just the beginning. Um, your contribution to entertainment, social causes is just commendable. And I really want to thank you for giving us this, this opportunity. Just in case you have something special you want to tell your fans, now would be a good time. I let go the mic. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I guess the reason I have to t say now is the fact that um, uh, come 22nd of September this, this month, one of my one of, one of the films that I'm very proud to have produced to have been a part of is is uh, dropping um, on Netflix worldwide, and it's called The Black Book. The Black Book. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So that on drop, Netflix. Yes, that drops on the twenty second, and uh, people should go watch that. And a lot more uh, uh, coming. Is that that film signals, you know, a lot more things to to come from my stable. That is so wonderful, and there's so much more content on Netflix about that you have uh, either starred in or produced. It's just amazing. But before I let you go, we forgot one key important thing. What's happening with next year for the Brain Bank? Oh, I'm, <laughs> proud, I'm proud to announce. I'm proud to announce that um, I haven't seen Brain Bank in 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 Atlanta and seen it here in LA. Is going to a different LA next year. Next year, Lagos, Nigeria, is hosting the African Brain Bank uh, uh, Summit and, and, and annual uh, uh, gala. And you know how we say in Lagos, you know, the party never stops. I know. So, <laughs> and we we are serious. We we are serious business in, in in Lagos. We do we work hard and we play hard. So what I'm promising everybody that is coming for that conference is to, you know, to strap up. We're going to work hard, but we're going to play hard. <laughs> you got that. So start getting ready, that's buy your it. tickets. That's right. It's going to be the th last week of November, the uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, Thanksgiving weekend. Weekend for you people here in America. Right. We, want, we don't want excuses. People should <laughs> take that time and travel to the motherland. And, you know. Yeah, more than a year. <laughs> and we're looking for allies and everyone yes all right yes, yes. well my brother thank you very much thank you so much thank it's you. just been amazing and thank wish you so much more success Amen. and may the brain bank thrive and rmd go to higher heights Amen. thank you my well. pleasure thank you so much and see you next time on team tv Amen.